And why? Good morning, say. Um, good morning, Sammy. I hope you are good today. Oh yeah, I'm good. Oh, just that I'm sorry I put me on. But it, I'm good. It happens. It happens. But once you you'll be okay. Yeah. And how is Kumasi? Oh, so far everything is okay. Everything is okay. Just on radio, but then you know I have to make time for you because. I really respect your platform, respect everybody in there, and greetings to everybody in there this morning. All right, thank you so much for the respect you have for our platform. Now, I believe you've heard the story as was being narrated by Kofi Supreme. Uh, he accused you for stealing his song, Yane Mana for Shilo. Um, you have the space now. What is your response? Well, I, mean, um, I think it's, it's very funny for any artist to say that um, I stole a song and sold it to another artist. Like in this very age, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who really respects copyright issues, intellectual property and all that. Now, this issue we're talking about is an issue that came up like um, a year or a year and a half ago. So, Kofi Supreme was actually on the radio station in Kumasi accusing me that I've stolen his song and given it to another artist. So, I was like, ah, how can I steal somebody's song and give it to another artist to work on it? So, I told him that, okay, fine, if you think I've stolen your song, and as somebody who believes in copyright, go to the copyright office, not a complain and let them call me. If they call me and I come in, I'll explain what I think about the song and how you say I've stolen a song. So he took up the copyright office. When I say us, I mean myself and then she low. Now, this is why I come in somehow. It is because I was the one leading to those promotions in Kumasi. You get it. And then, so when they called us to the copyright office, we, we all went there, so back and forth, back and forth, they ruled and told us that both individuals have different songs, and so each individual should go ahead and promote his song. But if both parties believe that they are not okay with the ruling that they have passed, then they can take it a step further and go to the court. But then they as copyright office will come in and bring their ruling as in what they also agreed on at the court. So for us, it wasn't any big deal, but for me, I thought he was just trying to turn in my image, so I, I, I told myself I was going to see him for defamation. But then, with my employers and all that, they were like, I shouldn't mind him, maybe I just, it's just going to give him the mileage he wants, so I decided to stop and not even talk about that. Now, fast forward from that, issues came up, and then I was like, uh, I think, I think, Shiloh called me once and said that Kofi uh, Kenata had called him, Say that um, Supreme said he would take him to Antwai and blah blah blah. I was like, yo, Supreme, I, I don't really have any issue with Supreme. So if he thinks he wants to take me to Antwai or wherever he thinks, it should just go ahead because the gods are not crazy. They don't just stand up and act. So he should take us there. And you know, Shilo is related, or should I say, Shilo's wife is related to um, uh, S2. And you know how these people take some of these cases and all that here. So I think they went there and it came out that the guy had not actually even cursed them or he's not even been there to mention such a thing like that. So they called him there, which I couldn't go because I hardly believe in such stuff. So they went and the outcome was that he shouldn't even use the name of Antua to actually scare anybody again because he's not been there. Listening to the issue, he has no point and so he shouldn't even mention the name of Antua again. So I wonder why this thing comes up and then he's like, I've stolen his song and sold it to someone else. Now, how does it happen? I mean, by the job I do, and I, I know you also know it, we get to hear lots of songs before they are even released. Chuck Cordia's Mary album, for instance, was with me for like a year and a half before it was even released. If I want to sell a big song to any artist, why would I sell Supreme Song? Now, I mean, look at the issue. I think the brother is just bitter. For me, I don't have any issue with him. After releasing your name, Mana, he came out with several issues, accusations from one radio to the other, which I've not spoken about for over a year now. I've not spoken about this issue for over a year now. So when it came up, I was like, no, this is, this is happening on Sammy's show, and I feel I respect that platform enough. So let me just come in and talk about it. He, he had made accusations of me saying he sent me threatening messages and all that. Sammy, when we went to the copyright office, he said the same thing. And you know, the lawyer told him that, listen, if you are making case of threat and all that, that's not what we do with here. If he wants to report you for threat, he will have reported you to the police and not to the copyright office. He get it. So there are so many things going on. He says that I said my phone was uh, on low battery. The next time my phone is lost, the next time my phone is, is missing. 
I see. Now, NY, anyway, let, let, let me also, let me find out this from you. Did you know about the song before um, Shilo released his uh, version of it? Definitely. I wouldn't tell you a lie. I remember when we went to the couple, the very first time Shilo sent me the song, I told him that, listen, the hook, or should I say the chorus, sounds familiar to what the Supreme has released. Did you get it? Now, this is why I didn't take so much interest in the fact that, because it was a chorus. And this is something, the, street, the term your name, Mana, a dozen boys, boys, your name, Mana, is a street term, which was popular in Kumasi and even in Takra, the of that time. Now, the first time I heard that term was in Pee studio. That was the first time I heard that term. And then, so when he sent me the song, I was like, yo, this is what I've heard before. But then both songs are even different because the tempo and all that are different. So then you can go ahead and promote your song. So I'm surprised he comes in to say that I've stolen his song and sold it to somebody. So I mean, look at this issue of he saying that um, he lost cousin or somebody said that I sold the song to him. So I mean, I don't know if that she lost cousin has traveled or is dead. He's yet to provide or bring that particular person who accused me of selling the song to she lost. So how can he just go about and do such, such public, I don't know if it is for publicity or something, but it has to be even with the fact that even if it's for publicity, it's not even released a single song after that. We've moved on beyond that to report songs to some mini short videos and all that. And this brother is still all over the place talking about the fact that I've stolen a song and sold it to another artist. How does that work? Okay. Why steal a song and sell it to someone else? Now, now, let me also ask you this finally. When Shiloh played his version of the song to you, did you have that feeling that maybe he has also been motivated by somebody? That is why he was writing such a song? You know, I asked him. The very first thing I did was to ask him because he mentioned my name at the latter part of the song and another guy, DJ Fish, who works with Angel Ephraim. So I asked him, that has he heard that there's another artist like, who has done a song like that? And he told me, oh no, he was in Takradi when he heard the term, so he's not even heard it. I'm like, listen, this is what I've heard. And it sounds familiar, I mean, with the chorus. So go and listen to that one. So when he came back, he was like, oh, okay, I have not even heard it, so what do we do? And I'm like, okay, fine, to me, they are both temples and all that are different, so you can go ahead and do your promotion. And I mean, I don't know the kind of uh, supreme song you have with you, but after she lost song, Kofi Supreme has gone on to record two different versions of the same song to make it sound similar like that's the, uh, the one that Shiloh has. So you ask yourself, what is going on? He, he was, I, I, I actually asked for the tape yesterday and I listened to it. He was making accusations and saying the song, his song has been online before we did what was coming. I'm sure you are sitting behind a piece. You just Google your name, Mana, or whatever he calls it. Check out the first two or three pages and check the result. Whose songs are popping out? Whose songs are seen on there? So if you say the song has been online and because of that we are just not being good for him or whatever, then it makes me feel, I don't know what is wrong with him actually. I don't really know because if, if, if this is how we've got to go with the music industry, for me, I respect copyright. I mean, when people take content from my website, I go hard after them. So how much more steal somebody's song and even sell it? Now, how much did I sell the song? And how did I steal it? That's, that's the funny thing to me. Sometimes I said, we... We listen to a lot of songs before they come out though. So if I really want to sell somebody's song, then I could be selling a big artist song and make huge bucks from it and not an upcoming artist who's fight you know, who's frustrated.